The year is 980 AD. I am in the merciless void of the North Atlantic Ocean. The wind howls like a living beast, trying to tear apart the sails of a wooden ship that seems too fragile for these huge waves. There are 30 men on deck. They are soaking wet. His beard is frozen from the salt water. All silent. They are not afraid of war. They are not afraid to die by the sword. Their fear is different. They are afraid of the white darkness. For four days a dense fog has engulfed the world. There is no sky. There is no horizon. The stars, their only map, are hidden behind a lead gray ceiling of clouds. Without the sun and stars, a 10th century sailor is essentially blind. Going off course in the Arctic Circle means a slow and painful death by starvation, dehydration, or freezing to death. But history tells us they did not disappear. They did it. They found Iceland, Greenland, and even the coasts of America centuries before the compass was invented in Europe. But how? For centuries the answer to this question remained buried within the cryptic verses of the Norse sagas. Legends told of a magical object given by the gods, Solarstein. So, Sunstone. A magical crystal that can find the sun even when it's invisible. Today we know that magic was actually real. But this was no magic trick. This was advanced optical physics, mastered a thousand years before modern science. In this documentary, we will see what enabled the Vikings to rule the oceans. We will reconstruct the story of the crystal compass To understand the impossibility of these journeys, we need to look at the map. Unlike the Mediterranean sailors who followed the coastline, the Vikings, they were driving across 2,500 kilometers of open ocean, straight into the middle of nowhere. The basic method they used was latitude navigation. In theory, it's simple. If you leave Bergen, Norway and go straight west. By keeping the pole star at the same height above the horizon each night, you will eventually hit the southern tip of Greenland. Sounds easy, right? But the North Atlantic is not a theory. It is chaos. When the sky was clear, they were masters of geometry. Archaeology gave us the Unardic Disk, a fragment of an 11th century sun compass found in a monastery in Greenland. Here's how it works. You place a vertical stick, a gnomon, in the center of a marked wooden disk. At noon, the shadow is at its shortest and points directly north. By following this shadow curve, sailors could correct their course with astonishing precision. As long as they could see the sun, they knew where north was. They were safe. But Arctic summers are deceptive. The weather can change in an hour. Low pressure systems dominate the region, resulting in dense cloud cover and fog that can last for weeks. At that moment, the sun compass becomes just a useless piece of wood. Under a gray cloud cover, no bars cast a shadow. 
Imagine the psychological horror. You are in an open boat. Your fresh water is limited. If you deviate from the course by just five degrees, you'd completely miss a huge island like Greenland and be adrift in the Atlantic until you die. They needed a backup system. They needed to see the invisible. The first clue to this backup system was found not in a shipwreck, but in a story. In the saga of St. Olaf, in the episode known as Rolf's A with a QTTR. The story takes place on a snowy and overcast day. King Olaf challenges his guest, Captain Sigurd. Sigurd claims to know where the sun is, even though the sky is completely overcast. He points with his hand to a point in the gray sky. The king is skeptical. To verify Sigurd's claim, the king orders a special object to be brought. The text reads as follows. The king looked up and could not see where the sun was. Then he took the sunstone in his hand, held it up to the sky, and saw where the light was coming from. For decades, modern historians viewed this passage as an element of folklore. There were always magical items in the stories of kings, right? But in 1967, Danish archaeologist Thorkild Ramsku put forward a radical theory. What if the sunstone isn't magic? What if this is a mineral common in the area? Especially a pure calcite crystal known as Icelandic spate. Ramsku suggested that this crystal had optical properties that could detect polarized light. In other words, it is a stone that can read the secret signature of the sun behind the clouds. The scientific world was astonished but skeptical. Could a boulder really be a navigation computer? So, what makes this stone so special? Iceland spate, or optical calcite, as it is scientifically known. It has a unique property that distinguishes it from other minerals in the world, birefringence. If you place this crystal on a book, you will notice that the letters appear double. It's like your eyes are bad. But this is not an optical illusion. The stone bends the light entering it and splits it into two separate beams. This simple optical trick is the key that unlocks the sky. To understand how a Viking used it, we must speak the secret language of light, namely polarization. Direct sunlight vibrates in all directions. However, when sunlight enters our atmosphere and hits air molecules, it scatters and becomes polarized. Imagine it like giant, invisible rings of light orbiting the sun. The secret is this. Even if clouds completely block out the sun, this polarized light pattern is still present in the sky. Our human eyes cannot see these patterns. We are blind. But Crystal, Crystal can see. Here's the mechanics of the spell. When you look through the crystal into the sky and turn it, the double refraction property creates two separate shadows or bright spots within the stone. As you turn the stone, the intensity of these two points changes. One darkens, the other brightens. But there's a magic moment that moment when two points become exactly the same brightness. At that moment, the crystal aligns with the invisible polarized rings in the sky. 
When you capture this precise angle, the stone will show you the exact position of the sun, as if pointing with its finger. It may sound incredibly complicated, but for a trained navigator, this process takes mere seconds. Modern experiments conducted in 2011 proved that this method has shocking accuracy. Researchers found that even 45 minutes after sunset, using just this stone, they were able to find the position of the sun with an error of one degree. The Vikings had a twilight compass in their possession literally. They could see their way even as night approached. But over the years, scientists have refuted this theory with one question. If the Vikings use these crystals on every ship, why haven't we found sunstones in a single Viking shipwreck? The answer came in 2013. But not from a Viking ship. Exactly 500 years after the end of the Viking Age. It came from a warship that sank off the coast of England in 1592, the Alderney Wreck. Divers working on the Alderney wreck found compasses and calipers in the ship's navigation locker. But right next to them, buried in the mud, lay a rough, blurry block of stone. At first glance, it looked like glass. No one understood what was going on. But when chemical analysis was performed, the shocking truth emerged. This was pure Iceland spa. But in the 16th century, when the magnetic compass had already been invented and became widespread, why was an English warship still carrying ancient Viking technology? The fact that this stone was found on a ship in the 16th century tells us something incredible. Magnetic compasses of that period were unreliable especially on warships because the iron balls weighing tons on the ship were disrupting the magnetic field and confusing the compass. The sunstone was not just a Viking legend. It has been passed down from sailor to sailor for centuries. It was a vital backup system that kicked in when new technology failed. The legacy of the Vikings lived on even after Christopher Columbus. The Alderney crystal was concrete evidence that this material was present on the ships. But the Vikings weren't just using any stone they found on the beach. They were processing them. To achieve maximum efficiency, the crystal had to be cut into a perfect rhombus. This is not a shape you will find randomly in nature. This is a product of engineering. The angle of the stone had to be in perfect harmony with the angle of refraction of the light. Theories and individual experiments are convincing, but science demands reproducibility. To understand whether the stone can really build an empire. The researchers needed something bigger, virtual Vikings. In 2018, scientists from Jevus Lorand University in Hungary launched a massive computer simulation. They set out 1,000 virtual ships from Bergen to Varf, Greenland. The variables were relentless, storms, random currents, and, of course, cloudy days. The results were even more striking than modern historians had predicted. In simulation, if a Viking ship relies solely on the shadow bar and the weather is overcast, the chances of reaching the target were almost zero. The ocean was swallowing them. 
However, when virtual navigators use the Sunstone every three hours, the success rate increases to 92%. In some scenarios, it even jumped to 100%. This statistic tells us this. This stone was not a luxury. This stone was the only difference between survival and extinction. The 92% success rate this crystal provided didn't just mean returning home safe and sound. This meant having the courage to go further. This courage took them to the ends of the world they knew, beyond Greenland. And finally, exactly 500 years before Christopher Columbus discovered the New World, Leif Erikson's ships reached Vinland, off the coast of North America. Viking settlements in today's Lance AUX Meadows region of Canada are the epicenters of this impossible journey. Is the petrified evidence of this impossible journey. Stop and think for a moment. A simple, transparent piece of calcite. If this stone had not been found in the Scandinavian mountains, the Viking ships would have been lost in the middle of the ocean. Settlements in America will never be established. Perhaps the genetic and cultural map of Europe would have been shaped completely differently. Sometimes history is changed not by great armies or revolutions, but by a stone small enough to carry in your pocket. Sunstone was one of the quietest yet most effective technologies history has ever seen. Analysis. Emphasis on the butterfly effect. On how a small stone changed world history. Today, we live in a world surrounded by GPS satellites. But ironically, modern science is now turning back to the Vikings. In polar regions where magnetic fields may be disrupted or Engineers are developing polarization-based navigation systems for use in space missions where GPS signals do not work. That magic principle, held in the hands of a bearded sailor a thousand years ago, is now the eye of robots and spacecraft. The cycle is complete. The Viking Sunstone mystery reminds us of one of humanity's most important lessons never underestimate the wisdom of the ancients. They didn't have electronic circuits, batteries, or satellites. But they had the ability to read nature. They knew the language of light, stone, and sea. We have called this legend and tale for centuries. But when the fog cleared, all that remained was science itself. Thank you for watching. If you want to get lost in the foggy pages of history and if you like exploring the unknown, don't forget to subscribe to Onyx Able. Because the truth is always deeper than it seems. See you in the next mystery. Goodbye.